Monday morning, it's time to leave Missouri and head up to Wisconsin. Now it's time to drive the 620 miles to Jeff's house. Well, the Christmas tree lights had to come on at some point, I guess. I get up to Jeff's house just fine, but for some reason I don't take any footage while I'm there. Here I am in Wisconsin on the property I'm going to hunt. I hunted out here uh, two years ago and had a close encounter with a really big tom out here, so I'd like to have that again and seal the deal this time. But I'm going to go walk around and just take a look, see how everything is. I get just around the corner when I spot two birds coming in hot. That was certainly promising. When I first walked over the hill over there, I spooked a hen that went up, and then as I'm coming around the corner toward the toward the water hole, I see two black birds down there, and those were the two toms. So then I just kind of I ran out of there, got around the corner, back up on top of the hill, and watched those two toms. Then before you know it, there was a jake come down, and then two more jakes. So it's three jakes, two toms, and a hen that I saw. And the hen was the only one I scared, so tomorrow it's supposed to be raining for about the next two days. So I wonder how that'll change their pattern. It's about 12.30 when I saw them over there, so maybe they hit the water hole a little later in the morning. But really only one stopped at the water hole, so. Right here I'm checking out some public hunting ground. It's private owned, but public access. I didn't see any sign. I saw some footprints out here about two years ago. Um, but a grouse did about give me a heart attack, so. They like to do that. Good morning. It is Wednesday, May 8th, I believe. And it is 6.15, which makes me about at least an hour behind schedule because I couldn't find my wallet. I ended up finding it, but it was right where I'd already looked twice, and I'm trying not to wake up Jeff's household looking for it. I don't know if I succeeded in that or not, but, uh, hmm. So that means I did not get a chance to hear gobbles in the morning, see maybe where the birds were roosting. Yesterday they passed through at about 12.30 or so. So it's about, it's pushing 620 now. So we shall see how that works out. I think what I'll do when I get there is just kind of 
throw a few of my things into the building and uh, then put my stuff on and head out to one of the little 4x4 deer blinds because it's supposed to rain pretty good starting at about 11 o'clock on through the rest of the day so I'll at least have a place to be out of the rain in a spot where the turkeys came right through yesterday and it's kind of nice that it's not raining right now because it's a steep drive into the property I put her in four low and head up the drive I get all my stuff put away in the cabin and then I head out in the woods because it's not raining quite yet. I get to the back side of the property and I got one goblin. He's on the neighbor's property so I get down below him and I give him a few soft calls. It's not long before I see him on the hilltop. It seems to take forever for him to come down this hill. But on his way down, he puts on quite a show for me. A lot of strutting, a lot of drumming. When he turns his back on me, I make a move with my shotgun. I gotta wait till his head and neck is clear of this little tree. He moves his head. And the chaos ensues yet again. That shot went who knows where. So at this point I spend the better part of a half hour walking up and down the fence line which is right at the top of the hill right at the where those trees are. The neighboring land is all cow pasture so I can see really well. So I spend a good bit of time up there glassing every log, every rock and I do not see a bird. So I go back down to investigate and see if I can find pellets in the trees around where the turkey was. At least this makes me feel a little bit better. I hammered this. I'm only 15 yards from where I'm sitting and probably about 12 to 15 yards to where he was up on the hill. So it's not that he was that far, but I sure did hammer this tree. And it even has a pellet in it. A number seven heavyweight from Federal. Well folks, that is heartbreaking. I'm back at the truck because I've only got one more shell with me, so I need to reload and get another shell or two. Oh man. So I went back and ranged with my rangefinder, and from the tree I shot back to the tree I was leaning against was 17 yards, so my gun barrel is another yard or two away from that tree, so 15 or 16 yards out I shot and then from the tree I shot to where the turkey was standing was 16 yards, which is a nice range for me. My pattern's not 
too big, but it's not too tight. I had plenty of time to think about it. I was thinking about it the whole time he's coming in because it took minutes for him to get that close once I saw him at the top of the hill. And I just waited for him to get clear of a tree and he had his whole head and neck area out from a tree. And I thought uh, I got my bead right where I want it on his upper part of his neck. Squeezed the trigger and when his wing went up, I was thinking, oh, he's just going to flap and flop and whatnot. But nope, his wing went up and he took off running. And I was really mad because I'm thinking, what is this amateur hour? I mean, sure, you can make fun of my turkey calling, but I can't shoot a turkey at 30, 35 yards? Come on, man. And turns out I nailed a tree. Leave a comment below if y'all have nailed a tree like that somewhere between you and the turkey. <laughs> so I think the rest of my plan is going to be, it's supposed to start raining here soon. I think I'm going to go down to a deer blind that's near the water hole where I saw the turkeys yesterday when I scouted. And put out a single hen decoy out there that will be seen from just about every direction. And if they come down to another group or something comes down to that water hole... Maybe they'll get curious enough about that hen decoy and just come this way because that water hole is just out of range of that deer blind. So if I can just get them to come just a little bit, maybe 10 yards from that water hole just to take a look, they'll be in range. So let me grab some more shells and get back out there. <laughs> decoy out to the front. And I've got that water hole over there. These trees right here are 51 yards. Back side of the water hole was 50 and 51 yards. Front side of the water hole was 36. We've got a hen about 150 yards away, kind of working her way this way. It's a good sign. That hen has been out there for hours. She disappears, reappears, and now she's been out there for a long time and I've been wanting to get out of here. Even the blind is leaking. So we got about 20 mile an hour winds and it's raining and that ain't gonna stop. So what I think I'm gonna do now, she's disappeared. Looks like she maybe went up the hill. I'm gonna jump out and uh, Grab my decoys and get back to that little cabin. Hopefully I'm smart enough to figure out how to get that to turn on so I can at least dry some of my stuff out. So now I'm just going to transfer recordings to the computer, make some coffee, recharge batteries as well as I can. And all I can do now is hope that tomorrow is as good but better than today. Hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching.